It being 5.30 p.m., the House will now proceed to the consideration of private members' business as listed on today's order paper. Orders of the day. Private members' business resuming consideration of motion M24, Tamil Heritage Month, in the name of Mr. Anna DeSangri. When the House uh, last took up debate on the motion, the Honourable Member for Scarborough Centre had seven minutes remaining in the time for her remarks, so we'll go to that now. Uh, resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Scarborough Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is a pleasure to rise in the House today to speak to Motion 24, recognized every January in Canada as Tamil Heritage Month. I will resume where I left back in May. Uh, Tamil Canadians are making a difference in all walks of Canadian life. They are the business owners that are catering our job, the teachers that are helping to guide our children into adulthood, the doctors and nurses that care for us when we are sick, the athletes whose exploits we follow with excitement on the cricket pitch, and there are the politicians that represent all of us at City Council in the provincial legislature, and I'm proud to say also right here in this house Members like the Honourable Member for Scarborough Rouge Park are making a difference for all Canadians every day and are doing us all proud. The Tamil diaspora in Canada is estimated to be more than 300,000 people. The population has grown quickly from fewer than 150 in 1983. There is a community that has faced tremendous challenges and like so many others have come to Canada as a land of opportunity and for new beginnings. Like my family and the families of so many of our fellow citizens, they came to Canada for the opportunity to build a better life for their next generations, for their children and grandchildren, to live in peace and safety with their neighbors and work hard to provide for their families. We are proud to have welcomed them to Canada, just like Canada has always been an open and welcoming country. And just as we see we are welcoming Syrian refugees to Canada today. I hope that in 30 years we can look back and see that Syrians we have welcomed into the Canadian family have made as important and meaningful a contribution to Canada as have our Tamil brothers and sisters. Mr. Speaker, it is time Canadians owe much to the contributions of the Tamil community to our economic and social prosperity. I am proud to stand with my friend, the Honourable Member for Scarborough Rouge Park, in support of making next January and every January Tamil Heritage Month. Thank you, Nandri. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Calgary, Forest Lawn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stand today in support of the motion put forward by my colleague the member of Scarborough Rouge River Park, Park sorry, to recognize the contributions of the Tamil Canadians have made to Canadian society by declaring the month of January every year as a Tamil Heritage Month. The motion also calls for the recognition of the richness of the Tamil language and the culture and the importance of educating and reflecting upon Tamil heritage for future generations. As you know, as you all know, every January Tamils celebrate Thai Pongo, the harvest festival, when, uh, all over the world. The sun is being thanked for providing the energy for a bountiful harvest. In Canada, we do something similar outside Tamil com communities, and I, of course, am referring to the Thanksgiving coming up next weekend. I'm trying to stand with my Conservative caucus colleagues in support of Tamil Canadians, just like the former Conservative Prime Minister Brian Mulroney did in the 1980s, when under his leadership, Tamil resettlement commenced after the 19, after, uh, in 1983. Over 300,000 Tamils have since then resettled here in Canada, and our society is very enriched because of it. One example of the Tamil hard work is the Uthian newspaper in Scarborough, which is turning 21 years of publication this fall, and I wish them many more years to come. Mr. Speaker, I've been dealing with the Tamil community in Canada and abroad for over a decade now, since I was the Parliamentary Secretary for Foreign Affairs. So I have a first-hand knowledge of the struggles and the challenges that they've had to deal with, whether settling in Canada or recovering after the tsunami that ravaged Sri Lanka in 2005. I visited Sri Lanka 
in, uh, with the former Prime Minister, Prime Minister Martin, and former and the late Jack Layton. I can tell you that I have been, I remain impressed with the dedication and the commitment of those involved in the reconstruction of the communities affected by this natural disaster. Our dark team did an exemplary job, Mr. Speaker, during this crisis. I have also learned firsthand of the Tamil spirit of engagement when I came to the transitional needs of the internally displaced people, having visited one such camp in Vavunia in 2009. In November 2013, I represented Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Stephen Harper at the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting held in Colombo, Sri Lanka. Here again, I took the opportunity to forcefully express my government's demand that Tamil rights be upheld by Sri Lankan authorities. During this visit, I laid a wreath at the northern outpost of the Elephanta Pass in memory of all civilians who died from Sri Lanka's 30-year-long ethnic conflict. I also met with the northern province chief minister and listened to his concerns on rehabilitation and rebuilding efforts by the Tamil people. I understand now that the Tamil Canadian connection has been for over 10 years, which have been directly involved in this community. The Canadian government, indifferent of its political colors, have been a friend to the Tamil people for over 30 years. And this has been the case both during the plight of the Tamil refugees coming to Canada, as well as those remained in Sri Lanka, to whom the Canadian government offered assistance with reconstruction and reconciliation to enable Sri Lankans to live in freedom and security. Canada has been a faithful partner to the Tamil people abroad in the areas of human rights, the rule of law, promotion of democracy. At home, Canada's ethno-cultural mosaic has been enriched with the accomplishments of the Tamil Canadians who have called Canada home from coast to coast to coast. To conclude, Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank my colleague across the aisle for the important initiative, and I look forward to celebrating the first Tamil Heritage Month in a little while. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Vancouver East. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. While the majority of the Tamil peoples coming to Canada to make it their home have arrived since 1983, Tamil peoples first began arriving here as early as 1948. Through these decades, the rich history and heritage of Tamil people has been a great contribution to Canada. Motion M24 asks the government to have these contributions and Tamil Canadians' rich cultural heritage recognized by declaring January of every year Tamil Heritage Month. I stand in this House today to voice my support for this motion. I'm pleased that the Liberal member from Scarborough Rouge Park has tabled this motion. This was something that the NDP had previously brought to the House through private member Bill C-471 an act to designate the month of January, Tamil Heritage Month, from 2013. Unfortunately, that bill died on the order paper following after first reading. So it is with great pleasure, and I'm glad that the member opposite is taking up this cause and building upon that work. January is the perfect month to recognize Tamil Heritage as one of the most important events, the Thai Pongal the Tamil monsoon celebration takes place in the middle of that month. This festival dates back at least a thousand years. This is just one aspect of the deep cultural heritage the Tamil Canadians have brought to Canada. The Thai Pongal festival is named so as it takes place on the first day of the month, Thai in the Tamil calendar. This normally falls between the 12th and 15th of January. Pongal refers to the staple dish of the celebration, a sweet rice-based dish which I've seen compared to rice pudding. Thai Pongal is a festival that can be celebrated by one and all, and it is known for its inclusiveness. It is a celebration akin to a thanksgiving for a successful harvest. One of the great aspects of the Thai Pongal is the sharing of the Pongal. Even though households all make their own, in the spirit of unity and inclusiveness, the pongal is meant to be shared. After the family meal, it will be shared amongst late neighbors, friends, and other relatives. It's not just a celebration, 
that the Tamil Canadians are well known for. The Tamil language, literature and art are also great examples of the depth of the culture and heritage of Tamil peoples. The Tamil language is the oldest spoken in India and Tamil literature is the oldest known literature in India. While Tamil literature proper is considered to have begun in the first century CE, some inscriptions have been found dating as far back as the third century BCE. In 2004, India declared Tamil a classical language because it meets the criteria of being ancient, having an independent tradition, and processes a considerable body of ancient literature. When speaking of rich cultural heritages, it would simply be impossible to leave the Tamil peoples unmentioned. For more than 75 years now, Tamil Canadians have brought this incredible heritage to Canada, both on the economic and socio-cultural levels. The NDP has long recognized these contributions and are proud to officially recognize the importance of Tamil heritage in Canada. This motion will see the federal government catch up to other jurisdictions such as the provincial government of Ontario and the municipal governments of Toronto and Ottawa. Following the NDP bill from 2013 in this House, those jurisdictions adopted motions of their own, formally recognizing the heritage and contributions of Tamil Canadians during the month of January. Today, Canada is home to hundreds of thousands of Tamil Canadians. In 2011, Statistics Canada found that nearly 147,000 Canadians identified Tamil as their mother tongue. Due to the large global Tamil diaspora population, the accuracy of this figure is challenged by some community organizations and experts. Those groups point to a population more in the range of 200,000 in the city of Toronto alone. Whatever the final tally, there is no doubt that many, many Tamil people have come to Canada in order to make it their home, to raise their families, and to contribute to the rich fabric of Canadian society. The, the Tamil population is a noteworthy example of how Canada is made stronger through its cultural diversity as the con community continues to grow and thrive here. For just a few examples of the contributions Tamil Canadians have made it to this country, I'd like to point out to three individuals. First, Shyam Salvadure. He is a well-known and award-winning novelist who came to Canada with his family when he was 19. He's just one of many well-known Canadian authors with Tamil backgrounds. The second is Dr. Alagu, Alagu Pillai. After obtaining his PhD in nuclear phys physics from the University of Toronto, he traveled the world as a scholar, as a tenure professor in Malaysia and Zambia before returning to the University of Toronto. He has contributed immensely to Canada through his work at the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission as well as being the Canadian expert at the United Nations Atomic Energy Agency. My third example is Logan Kanapathy. Mr. Kanapathy is the first person of Tamil heritage elected to government in Canada. In 2006, he became a part of our history when he became the first Tamil Canadian to be elected to public office when he won a seat as a city councillor in Markham City, Ontario. These are just three examples of the contributions of Tamil Canadians have made to our country. Like so many groups coming to Canada, they're looking for a home that will allow them to thrive. And thankfully, many are able to find that in Canada, and we all benefit from that. Where there is the novel that you can't put down, the local city, city councillor who listens to the concerns of their community, or nuclear physicists ensuring that Canadian nuclear power plants are safe, the contributions of Tamil Canadians highlight not only their rich backgrounds, but highlight the strength of Canadian diversity. Declaring January Tamil Heritage Month is another step the government can take to reaffirm the acknowledgement that Canada is strengthened by diversity and, Mr. Speaker, promoting Tamil Heritage Month 
would not only show the Tamil Canadians that, met, that their many social, cultural, and economic contributions are valued, but it will provide Canadians from all walks of life a greater opportunity to learn about experience, to learn about and experience the rich, vibrant cultural background and history of Tamil Canadians. It is my pleasure, Mr. Speaker, to stand in this House today to support this motion. Thank you. Uh, resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Brampton East. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and it is an honour for me to have the opportunity to, to, in the House today to support motion number 24, introduced by my colleague and friend, the Member of Scarborough Rouge Park, which seeks to have the House recognize the Tamil community's contributions to Canada and to establish January as Tamil Heritage Month all across our great nation. Mr. Speaker, being the representative of the second most diverse riding in Canada, a riding that is home to five Sikh Gurdwaras, four Hindu temples, three mosques, and two churches, the people of Brampton East and all Canadians across our country understand the importance of cultural diversity. The Tamil Canadian community is one of the fastest growing communities in Canada and they contribute an unparalleled and unmeasurable amount to our country and my home riding of Brampton East. From the Brampton Tamil Seniors Association, which recently celebrated their third anniversary, to the Brampton Tamil Association, which hosts the annual Elam Pavilion at the Carabran Multicultural Festival, Tamil Canadian community leaders and volunteers dedicate countless hours to enriching the already vibrant community of Brampton for Tamil and non-Tamil residents alike. I'd like to take a moment to speak about the Brampton Tamil Seniors Association. This group serves 200 active seniors in Brampton and they consistently meet on Mondays at a local community centre to bring activities to seniors who are in isolation or face disability issues. They have the opportunity to mingle build a support network, learn computer skills, among other things, which are all essential for seniors in our community. They are contributing to their local community by helping provide the very basic services these seniors require in a context that is relevant to their community. The leadership of their community is to be commended. It is this for, for this very reason, among others, that in Brampton, Every January since 2014, the month has been proclaimed Tamil Heritage Month. Celebrating and embracing cultural diversity is vital for the city of Brampton. As many in this house know, January is an important month for Tamil Canadians. During this time, Thai Pongal, the Tamil Harvest Festival, and other Tamil artistic and cultural events take place throughout the month. Thai Pongal is a celebration to give thanks to the sun for providing the energy for a bountiful harvest. It is a value that is so essentially Canadian, simply because it is deeply ingrained in every, cultural, every culture that makes up our great nation. Much like many Canadians, the Tamil people came to our country after facing horrific experiences in their own. They deeply understand the value of the importance of freedom and justice and stand firm with our Canadian identity and our Canadian values. They advocate for human rights, freedom, tolerance, and generosity. Many arrived in Canada as refugees decades ago and now are proudly part of the Canadian fabric. The community's success can be attributed to hardworking individuals who value post-secondary education and fiscal responsibility. It is remarkable that within a relatively short span of time, Tamil Canadians have established themselves in Canada, empowered by their high level of literacy, education, and professional competency in all walks of life. They have planted deep roots in Canada and are flourishing from entrepreneurship to in business establishments to doctors, lawyers, and engineers, uh, lawyers from Osgoode Hall, like the member from Scarborough Rouge Park, 
uh, members of parliament uh, from our last session, where the first Tamil Canadian was elected to this house, to this current session, where our good friend, the member from Scarborough Rouge Park, serves alongside of us. And uh, on a personal note, Madam Speaker, um, you know, when I was in high school in Brampton, uh, you know, I stuck out because of my turban and my identity. Uh, even though I grew up in a city where diversity was the norm, uh, I always shied uh, from celebrating who I was. And uh, some of my Tamil friends were felt, you know, they couldn't celebrate their heritage. And in the last 10 to 15 years, you know, we've come a long way in our society, we've come a long way in our city, in our province, where Tamil Heritage Month is celebrated uh, on such a grand scale every January. And I look forward to, you know, having this motion passed and January being declared Tamil Heritage Month. So celebrations across this country, from coast to coast to coast, will be celebrating the Tamil heritage in Daibungo. And Canadians of all walks of life, no matter where they come from, no matter what they believe in, will be able to celebrate with their Tamil brothers and sisters and, and the joyous occasion of Tamil Heritage Month every January. So, Mr. Spe Ma Madam Speaker, in essence, the success story of Tamil Canadians is just another Canadian success story, and I encourage all my honorable colleagues to support this motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Resuming debate, the please the debate, the Honourable Member for Sherwood Park, Port Saskatchewan. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. I'm very pleased to rise today to speak in favour of uh, Motion 24, that in the opinion of this House, the government should recognise the contributions the Tamil Canadians have made to Canadian society, the richness of the Tamil language and culture, and the importance of educating and reflecting upon Tamil heritage for future generations by declaring January every year Tamil Heritage Month. And I want to congratulate my friend from Scarborough Rouge Park for bringing forward this motion. I've had the pleasure of working with him on the Scrutiny of Regulations Committee, and I'm sure he finds its work as interesting and engaging as I do. Now, whenever we discuss uh, motions like this, I do sometimes get the question from people, why do we need another commemorative month? And why is it important for us to spend time and energy on this discussion? And, and what does this discussion accomplish? So at the outset, I think it's important to answer those questions, to underline that what this motion calls for fundamentally is recognition. Recognition without instituting specific policy changes. There's no cost associated with this motion. It doesn't create a civic holiday, for example. Points of recognition, of cultural recognition like this, require the action of Parliament but they don't really involve us necessarily, or at least oblige us to take specific subsequent action. So then some might ask, Madam Speaker, what is the purpose of these kinds of steps? But despite not necessitating subsequent formal action by government, all of this, us in this House, I think, agree that these kinds of points of recognition are still very important. So much of our politics, of our life together, politics in, in the fullest sense of the term, is shaped by our understanding of our identities, not simply by material considerations or choices. The kinds of communities that we form, and often the political choices we make, are shaped by a, a deep sense of who we are, individually and collectively. Now, Canada is a country in which, at least historically, we have aspired to a shared common civic national identity complemented by a multiplicity of ethnic, cultural, linguistic, and religious identities. Unity in diversity, and both the unity and the diversity are important. And I would further say that acts of political recognition of the contributions of minority communities are essential to helping us preserve our unity in the context of diversity. People from minority communities benefit from expressions of cultural recognition and appreciation from majoritarian institutions like Parliament. These acts of recognition help ensure a fuller sense of national unity. So when we as a chamber undertake acts of specific recognition like this, we certainly are recognizing Canada's diversity, but we are also enhancing unity by showing Tamil Canadians our firm commitment to recognizing their distinct cultural identity and their contributions to Canada, and through that recognition, helping to ensure that all Canadians feel fully 
included. We're also, of course, inviting Canadians who aren't of Tamil origin to become more aware of uh, Tamil culture, the contributions of Tamil Canadians, and maybe to reach out and learn and experience some of the richness uh, in, in Tamil culture. Now, we often hear Canadian multiculturalism described in a way that suggests it is a modern, politically spawned phenomenon. But multiculturalism is not a product of government policy. It is a concept which our relatively new country drew on by learning from and observing the experiences of other societies throughout the vast swath of history. To start with, in fact, as my colleague from Scarborough specifically mentioned in his original speech, multiculturalism is indigenous to Canada. Canada has always had a plural plurality of languages and peoples living here since time immemorial. But Canada also draws in, uh, into its understanding of multiculturalism from the experience of various immigrant communities to Canada and from Indian immigrants to Canada in particular. Canada has a large and growing South Asian community, which happens to include my wife and my in-laws. Immigrants to Canada from India bring with them the experience of another multilingual, multi-religious, multicultural democracy. They have been doing multiculturalism for much longer than Canada has. And multiculturalism, though enhanced by acts of state recognition like this, fundamentally stands by, on ground created by individuals, families, communities, and by civil society as a whole. So I congratulate Tamil Canadians and all Canadians for the hard work that they do to preserve and strengthen their cultural identity as part of the Canadian whole. Anything that we do or say as acts of cultural recognition as Parliament really pairs in comparison to the significance of the more substantive acts of cultural preservation and sharing that ordinary Canadians in every part of this country are involved in every day. Parliament can undertake this act of recognition, and I believe it is important that we do so. But the substantive work continues to be in the hands of individuals, of families, of communities, and of civil society. Now, I note this because the Tamil community itself is a model of both the unity and the diversity that we aspire to here in Canada as a whole. The Tamil community contains a wide variety of different faith traditions. It includes people whose families hail from India or Sri Lanka or from other places. It includes people who are active in and have made significant contributions to all three of our major political parties and probably other ones. Now, one of the key ties which unites the Tamil community is the beautiful and historic Tamil language. And I know other members have spoken about that today. Tamil is one of the oldest surviving languages in the world. We know of written inscriptions that date back about 2,500 years. And the Tamil language is remarkable for its longevity, but also for its continuity over time. I read recently that around the world there are over 300 daily newspapers published in Tamil. So it is an old language, but also a language that is very much with us today. Now, I have to say I was surprised that my friend from Brampton East neglected to mention the contribution of Tamil Canadians to sports, but I am always happy to share my knowledge of sports with him. <laughs> Canadian tennis player Sonia Jayaseelan, cricketer Sanjayan There Singham, and ping pong player uh, Pradeep Ben Peter Paul, and hockey players Raman and Veelan Nandakumaran have made us all very proud. As members can tell, Tamil is not. Um, thank you, thank you. As members can tell, uh, Tamil is not my mother tongue, um, but uh, but I'm working on it and uh, interested, always interested in learning more. Now, my colleague noted in his opening speech that we would not be the first government in Canada uh, to recognize Tamil Heritage Month. Month. This has been recognized by the province of Ontario as well. He noted by a variety of municipalities, by Ajax, Pickering. Brampton, Toronto, Ottawa, York Region, Markham, Stouffville, Oshawa, and Whitby. And I'll just conclude by saying, Madam Speaker, uh, that it's so great to be in a country where, where valuing our diversity is a point of political consensus. We can look around the world and see places where the value of diversity, the value of unity diversity, is, de is debated as, as part of politics. But we are in a chamber uh, 
relatively, not, not, not perhaps the only one in the world, but relatively unique in the world, where, where this is really very clearly a point of consensus, where we all recognize the benefits of diversity, the value that immigration has brought to our country. And I think that universal political recognition of the value of diversity acts to strengthen our collective unity uh, in the context of that diversity. And again, I think this is a good opportunity to both recognize the contribution of Tamil Canadians, but also to invite non-Tamil Canadians uh, to learn more about Tamil culture, uh, to, to take the opportunity to draw on, on the richness that this community has brought to this country. So I want to again thank the member for bringing this, this forward and encourage all members to join me in supporting this motion. Thank you very much. Resuming debate, the piece of debat. Seeing no one, I will recognize the member for Scarborough Rouge Park for his right of apply. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Um, I'd like to thank uh, all my colleagues uh, from uh, all the parties for, uh, for, their, uh, for their statements this uh, afternoon. Uh, it's uh, definitely a sign of strength for the Tamil community that we can cross party lines and, and come together on such an important and very symbolic uh, issue that affects uh, all Tamil Canadians. I want to thank my colleagues uh, who spoke uh, not just today but also at the last session uh, recognizing um, M24 as Tamil Heritage Month every January uh, for their support and solidarity. Since I last took the floor in May uh, on this topic, I want to share some very personal stories, stories that speak to the history, strength and resolve of the Tamil Canadian community. This July, I visited Sri Lanka after a prolonged period of time where I personally saw the enormous destruction that took place over a 26-year civil war. It is a country where I was born, yet it's a country in which it is very difficult for Tamils to live in peace, security, and equality, or even call it home. It is a country that is unable to protect the unique Tamil language, culture, people, and land. My visit gave me a closer look into the ongoing conflict. It, is con it confirmed to me that while the armed conflict is over, the underlying issues for Tamils are far from it. The foundation for peace on the island must be one based on a robust federal system that respects all minorities, equality, human rights, and the strict adherence to the rule of law. I return to Canada grateful as always to come back to this country that I call home. Canada gave me and my family refuge in 1983. It is a country that has given abundance of rights freedoms and opportunities for me and my family. In Canada, the basis of your success or failure is not predetermined by who you are or where you came from. In many ways, the rest of my summer was spent reflecting on this reality. I had the opportunity to go to St. John's, Newfoundland to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the first Tamil boat refugees that arrived on our shores in 1983. We celebrated the great people of Admiral's Beach our Coast Guard, Captain Gus and Rom Dalton and his crew who saved the 155 camels and the survivors and their children who made that heroic journey. I want to thank the Canadian Tamil Congress for their hard work in organizing this event and celebrating Tamil Canadian history. I also want to thank the great people of Newfoundland for their generous welcome as always. I then had the opportunity to attend the second annual Tamil Fest in August of this year. It is the largest street festival in all of Scarborough. The event saw over 175,000 Torontonians celebrate Tamil food, culture, and people. In September, the Canadian Tamils Chamber of Commerce celebrated its 25th anniversary at the Metro Toronto Convention Centre, and I was proud to induct the first ever Hall of Fame award winner, Dialan Muttalingam of The Cable Shop. To see the countless Tamil Canadian business leaders who have succeeded under great adversity was truly inspiring. It is motivating to see the likes of Dr. Ravi Kugadasan of Digital Specialty Chemicals who gleed at the 23 PhDs that currently work for him. Last week, I traveled to a Tamil school in Dollar des Ormeaux with my friend, the Honorable Member for Dollar des Ormeaux in Quebec. The Tamils in the school spoke three languages, French, English, and Tamil. 
with a great deal of pride. I stand in front of you as a proud member of this community, a community whose contributions to Canada is really just beginning. We have come a long way both as Canadians and as Tamil Canadians. In closing, I want to thank the many individuals and organizations that have worked to make this initiative a reality. My friend, my friends, the collective advocacy and contributions of various community leaders, organizations, and all levels of governments across this nation efforts speak to the fact that preserving Tamil heritage in Canada does not begin or end in partisan lines. And it is because of our collective efforts that all Canadians will now be able to celebrate Tamil Heritage Month every January from coast to coast to coast. I want to leave where I started last May by acknowledging that we are on the traditional unceded lands of the Algonquin people, and I want to thank our Indigenous peoples for sharing their land. Nandri, merci, thank you, miigwech. Is the House ready for the question? La question est la suivante. The question is as follows. Andrew, seconded uh, by Mr. Soroya, moved that in the opinion of the House, the government should recognize the contributions that Tamil Canadians have made to Canadian society, the richness of the, of the Tamil language and culture, and the importance of educating and reflecting upon Tamil heritage for future generations by declaring January every year Tamil Heritage Month. Is it the pleasure of the House to adopt the motion? All those in favor of the motion will please say yay. All those opposed will please say nay. In my opinion, the yeas have it. Pursuant to Standing Order 93, the recorded division stands deferred until Wednesday, October 5, 2016, immediately before the time provided for private members' business. It being 5.30 p.m. It being 5.56 p.m. The House now stands adjourned until tomorrow, 10 a.m., in accordance with Standing Order 24-1.